What's up there, you hosers? It's Paradox Extraction, and welcome to the PXA Peaks at the Super Blood Hockey there. We took a look at that old time hockey there a little while ago, and that thing, well, that was about as fun as a can of warm Molson's there, wasn't it? But we're back with another one here now, and this is, again, hockey the way it's meant to be. It's all about the violence and about just getting the puck in the net any other way you can. It's not all about the rules and the offsides and the icings. It's just about winning the game however you can, and that's the way you're supposed to play it there, boys. Oh, what's up, guys? Sorry, I had to do my bad Canadian again. You know, it's just obviously the way it's got to go when you're doing a hockey game. So, yeah, this has uh, been on my PXA Peaks backlog for a little while. I'm actually working through that right now because I just haven't had a lot of free time lately, unfortunately. And I wanted to show this off to you guys because it's very cool in uh, a somewhat simplistic way. This comes to us from a single-person developer known as Lauren Lemke. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. I may very well be. And it is a... 8-bit style, very arcadey hockey game that you can play by yourself, but that is really ideally suited <clears throat> to being played with multiple people. And uh, I've been enjoying it quite a bit, actually, for what it is. It's, uh, it's very focused, which is one of the things I like about it. So I'll show this off to you here. So... It's, uh, it's relatively straightforward to get into. It's actually, if you're going to play it by yourself, it's actually surprisingly difficult. The developer actually just had to add a tutorial to a recent update because people were claiming that the game was cheating because it was actually very hard to score goals on the computer. And it is, to be honest, even on the easy difficulty, of which you can see there's quite a number of them here. But there's a reason for that, and it is mechanically based. So this is a, a relatively quick game. You can have real-time period lengths of one minute up to ten minutes. And you pick your difficulty, and there's various different options you can do here. So this game is rather comical with the blood. It's it's not it's not overly gory or anything like that. It's designed to be kind of goofy. So you can set how much that is, which I'll show you later. You can adjust uh, puck friction and elasticity, some basic physics stuff. And then there's a challenge mode in the game that allows you to unlock additional options, like manually controlling your goalies instead of having the computer doing it, uh, turning swapping of players off. And changing the weight scaling of the of the player. So there's five different challenges in the challenge mode for this game here that I'll show you. The challenge mode is actually quite challenging. But by completing these things that, uh, and you see here, it's like win a game while outnumbered, win a game while controlling only a single person, win a 12v12 game, things like that. If you complete this, you uh, unlock those little customization options, which you can do. And you can use those in single player or multiplayer, which is very nice. So, all right. So we're going to start this off here. So you see here, you can have four people on controllers or one on keyboard if you want. So it's kind of cool. You can play it one-on-one -on -one if you want, or you can have two different people controlling two different players on each team, which is pretty, which, which is good. It gives you some flexibility there. <clears throat> the AI in this game, though, if you do want to play single player, is no pushover, which is something I do appreciate. So you see here, you can pick your different teams, including North Korea, because sure. Uh, and of course, I'm going to pick the Team Canada there, right? And you get a little bit of layout customization or roster customization. So there's basically just three different types of players in this. There's the Enforcer, which is sort of the guy, as you can see here, he's much more suited towards fighting. There's the Sniper, who's good for taking precise shots on net. And then there's the Playmaker, which is sort of an all-around balanced one. So you can customize these up if you want, and you can have four of all one type if you want, which is kind of cool. So it gives you the ability to sort of mix and match things and change things up a little bit which is always nice so here we go so there's your keyboard controls and your mouse controls i'm playing with a controller uh or mouse controls sorry controller controls so yeah you skate around and it's just you can change your player you can check check or punch pass and shoot that's basically all there is to it and here we go you get this little nice in intro animation but you can also do this do you want to skip it <laughs> <laughs> it just kicks everyone out the door, which I thought was hilarious. Really nice little touch. You could have just skipped past the animation and not done anything about it, right? All right, and here we go. So, and as you can see right from the get-go there, this game is very exaggerated with the blood. This is, while this is a game that looks like it could have existed on, you know, the NES or something like that, definitely wouldn't have with all that blood on it with the way Nintendo left to sanitize games back in the day. Indeed. So, you're sort of, uh, you're getting the idea here. So... This game has pretty much no rules. It is very much arcadey hockey. There's no offsides, there's no icings, there's no anything like that. It's just you take the you take the puck and you try to get the puck in the net however you can. You can beat the snot out of players by coming up on them and hitting the B button and you see you sort of spew the spew the blood out. The hilarious thing is you can beat the crap out of the refs too if you like, which is the one thing any any NHL fan always wishes they could do. And you're that's pretty much it you're the the as i said though the game is not 
it, it does not screw around. The goalies in this in particular are very hard. If you do not, despite the fact that this is very much not a simulation, if the computer always scores on me first, that always, always happens. So the thing is, if you don't learn how to pass in front of the goalie and set up shots and get them in, you will not score against the computer very often. The tutorial literally straight up says, geez, I remember when my generation liked the challenge in games, and it literally says, expect to lose several games starting out. Because if you don't, uh, you, you've got to pass the puck back and forth. You've got to actually lay up a shot and confuse the goalie in order to get him off guard so that you can get the thing in. If you just come in straight, if you just come in straight and, sh and shoot straight on all the time, you will not get it in. The computer will stop. As you can see there, you see the computer was trying to do it too. It was trying to sort of line me up. Now, you do have the ability to do that, which is to charge up a shot. But even then that you still got to lay it up properly. So that is something very much to keep in mind is that the even on the easy difficulty, it's it, it does not screw around in that regard. I will say that as much as I agree that, you know, the, the trend of claiming the game is rigged just because you're not good at it is a common trend amongst gamers these days. I will say that the easy difficulty on this is not easy and it really sh probably should have, given that this is designed to be a somewhat casual, you know, basic for fun hockey game, the easy probably should be easier than it is. Uh, I, I would just tend to say that. You, you, it's got like five or six difficulty modes. I don't see why the easy mode couldn't have just been a casual mode where you can sort of kick the computer's ass if you wanted to, but whatever. You know, nonetheless, I do admire, I do admire the adherence to old school challenge as well. And you see, it's got some really cool little animations. Like this is very much a pixel art NES style game, but the the animations in it are actually really good, and that the the players actually feel like they have personalities, which I I really I really like. Oh, we almost got one in on in there. I have won a couple of games in this, just so you know. I'm, and I managed to win one of the challenge modes, though only one of them. It's definitely, uh, the challenge modes are definitely very tricky. Now, the other thing that's uh, that's key in this is, as of course I said, this is called Super Blood Hockey. So, fighting is a very large mechanic in this game. Now, triggering a fight is generally just done by harassing the same player over and over again. Whether it's the goalie or... Uh, just another player. Also, yeah, you see they have to kind of bounce their way out here. And here comes the Zamboni, who just doesn't give a crap. And he's just like, I'm cleaning this ice whether you guys are here or not. <laughs> I don't know. I find that kind of funny. Uh, it, that doesn't impact your players at all. It doesn't impact their stats or anything, even though it looks like they're getting hurt. This this sequence is just for goofs. All right. We're going to skip that and get back into it. So. All right. And here we go. And the goal is reversed because we're in another period now. So the way you start a fight is just by basically constantly harassing another player. It's you, you, you bash the same player enough time and a fight breaks out. But unlike traditional hockey, every fight is a bench clearer in this game. So it's always the entire team versus the entire other team. And this is where the game starts to feel a lot more like if Technos Japan, may, who made Super Dodgeball, made an ice hockey game. Because it turns into a basically a very light fighting game where your goal is just to mash the B button and punch the living crap out of the other team until they're all down. And if you win the fight, which is by knocking out all of their other players then what happens is you get a power play and one of their players goes down. But there's no penalty box in this. So the way one of their players goes down is you see him sitting on the ice completely gushing blood out of his leg like he was basically decapitated. And somehow he does miraculously heal later on, but as he uh, but while he's out you are you are up one player. And so that's <clears throat> that's sort of how that works. So the only way you get power plays is by starting and winning fights. Now, sometimes fights, especially on easy, are hard to trigger, but I'll show you what one looks like after, either in the tutorial or in the 12v12 challenge mode. Here we go. Got it. So, the AI will control all your other players. Oh, wow, we're kicking this one out. Wow, this guy is tough, actually. Wow, we got down to one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know how that happened. This guy's not even an enforcer, I don't think, or is he? Actually, yeah, he is. There we go, got him. All right, we won. You see, that guy's just puking blood over there. You're like, geez, like, it gets a little rough in places. But he's like, okay, I'm fine now. But you're going to see the other player lying on the, uh, who's out lying on the ice, just, yeah. This game is, yeah. As I said, a simulator, no, it is very much not. But the other thing that I really liked about this, so we talked about super blood hockey, there he is. Oh, God. 
Yeah, that's what you call a penalty there. So, we talked about Super Blood Hockey earlier this year. Not Super Blood Hockey, I'm sorry. Old Time Hockey earlier this year, which was a game that I was looking forward to because I, I can't play modern day sports games at all. They've just gotten their two overrun with systems and I just, they're way too complicated. But the problem that I had with Old Time Hockey was that it looked like it was going to be a simplistic thing and then it turned out to be really, really frustrating. When you were trying to change players it didn't it, it never worked reliably it never allowed you to change players to the one you want it always felt like the controls were laggy and then it, it really just wasn't listening to what you were asking it to do right that is not the case here at all the controls in this game are super tight when you press y it changes to the player closest to the puck every time reliably without fail which doesn't sound like it should be something that hard to do but old time hockey it don't, totally was you know the the button response is very quick. It's it's uh, especially when you're in the middle of fights or in a big group of players like that. It it I have never felt like I lost a puck because the game wasn't responding and wasn't doing what I asked. It was it when I'm when I get scored on or when I get the puck taken away from me. It's generally because I you know because I screwed up, not because the the game didn't listen. And that was super blood hot. God, I keep saying that. That was old time hockey's greatest fault was that it, it never felt like it was listening and it often felt like the game was acting like it knew better than you how to play it. And I really didn't like that. This definitely does not have that problem at all. This and that's what I like about this game is this doesn't have any weird career mode. It doesn't have any story mode. Oh God, we got another one going here. It doesn't have any weirdness to it like that. This game is very much focused on mechanics only. And I quite enjoy that. You know, there's no commentary and the commentary in old time hockey was cringeworthy, but yeah, there's no story. There's no commentary. It's there is the only real campaign there is in this game is a tournament mode that you have available that allows you to it's just playing your way through a roster kind of like in super dodgeball actually there's no there's no real narrative or anything like that and that's fine this is a game that is really while the ai is very good and i applaud him for putting uh effort into the ai because i think that's very cool this is really a game that's designed to play with friends. It has no online play, uh, and the developer has said he probably will not add it because it's too much work for too little too little reward. So you see this guy here, he's on his penalty, so he's still just he's just gonna sit there. And he might get run over by the Zamboni, but you know, that's that's the way it is in Super Blood Hockey, man. And as you can see, this has a really good chiptune soundtrack as well. Uh, the soundtrack is the one thing that uh, the developer didn't do himself, and uh, the soundtrack I think is really, really good. I think it fits fits very well for the type of uh, experience this is. But yeah, ideally this is something that you want to play with multiple people. So I've played this a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't tried it with four players. I'm hoping to do that um, at, when I'm recording this. Extra Life is a week away, and I'm hoping to do that with some people that I'm going to be playing with then. But it's... Uh, it's designed to, to just be an easy pick up and play game. Obviously this is pixel art, so this will run on anything. You can run this on a very low end computer if you want and have a, have a good time with it. And in that context, I think it's fantastic. You know, it's not very expensive. It's normal price is only about 850 US. But, you know, if you wanted to play this just on your own, there, there is a way you can, but you might, other than trying to, to get good enough to beat the computer on a high difficulty, there might not be a lot of content in here if you're just going to be playing it on your own. Though I, I think I would, would have enjoyed it that way either way. But in terms of being able to play this with your friends, I think that's where this would really shine and would, would really come in uh, as something special. So... Yeah, I think we should. Uh, I, I think it's a it's it's very good for that. I think it's priced accordingly. I think I really like the. I think the controls work really well. I really like the. Wow. Oh my god. I usually don't lose this badly. You know, I really like the aesthetic. I really love the the goofiness. How there's basically no rules. You know, how there there's gushing blood everywhere. You know, I I really enjoy that. And I mean, you can do as I said. You can go ridiculous with this. Like, look at this. You can crank this blood volume, whoops, all the way up to, I want to say it's 500 milliliters. Yeah, you can. So, all right, let's do that. And it's just ridiculous. Like, you can just, you know, there's no load times, which is the other thing that's really nice. Everything's super snappy, super quick. And this has no impact on anything other than the visuals. But as you can see, yeah. Really, would you want to play this game any other way? I'm not sure if I would. 
if I play this with some buddies during Extra Life, it's definitely going to be like this. Like, it's just, it's comical and exaggerated and just ridiculous. And especially if you play the 12 on 12 challenge mode, it's just utterly bananas. And it's, it's just, it, it's a fun time. It's good old school NES style 8-bit hockey. You know, it's not a simulator. It's not designed to be. It's designed to be good arcade fun and just goofy and dumb. And... I like games that just do that sometimes, that take something that has been, you know, modernized to death and just goes back to its roots and goes, no, let's just make this simple and fun and focus more on making a, a cool arcade game with a hockey wrapper on it as opposed to making a super accurate hockey game. And that's what old time hockey, it tried to straddle the line between making a game that was fun and goofy but also authentic and it kind of failed at both. This is focused 100% on making it goofy and fun first, and on that, I think it absolutely succeeds. So, I highly recommend this if you like. If you're looking for this this type of thing, you know, it's 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 filling a niche, and uh, one that we don't see filled necessarily that often. But uh, I've been having a ton of fun with it. As someone who is not into sports games at all, I've had a really good time, and I really look forward to trying this with some friends. So yeah, that is Super Blood Hockey, developed and published by Lauren Lemke in 2017. It is on PC, Mac, and Linux. It is on Steam for approximately $8, $8.50 US when it's not on sale. And yeah, for what it is, it is a great time, and I really highly recommend it for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you liked what you saw here, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That does help me out a great deal. If you want to watch something else, check out the videos on screen now. And don't forget to follow at PXA Media on Twitter to find out about new stuff first.